The government first sort of mentioned national education in earnest. Um, Donald Zung did so in the 2007 policy address. Right, so it, it's been floating around. Um, but I think that people didn't realize quite how big of a deal it was going to be because at that point it was still quite wishy-washy. They didn't really have the details. Um, earlier this year, there was a so-called round of consultations, um, and the government always refers to this as saying, you know, the community was consulted. But the uh, fact of the matter is that the, they held some consultation sessions, and the only people that were invited were people who were invited, and this included schools and teachers and selected parents' representatives. So the public at large were not really a, a part of that process. Um, and it wasn't really until some very problematic, controversial teaching materials came out. It was basically propaganda saying how wonderful the Communist Party of China was. But in fact, the uh, people who were really organized around this early was actually secondary school students. A few months even before July, uh, they had already started organizing and had actually held a protest against brainwashing, uh, which was wholly attended uh, by several hundred local secondary school students. They are opposed to mandatory national education classes that are going to be forced on all Hong Kong's primary and secondary schools. is that it's not just about the teaching materials. Um, this uh, is going to become a separate subject in the school curriculum. When you introduce a new subject and a new curriculum, you have guidelines. The curriculum guide is 181 pages long, and the government is always saying, well, you know, you people who oppose it, you've just not read our guidelines. Um, sorry, government, we've read those guidelines, and there are lots of problems. The ultimate goal of this curriculum is to make students be proud of their country, um, have national sentiments, and want to contribute to their country. We're not against that in any way. If that's how people feel, great. But we don't think that people should, be, should have to have a special subject at school that teaches them to be proud of their country. If their country has things that they should be proud of, they will be proud of that country. Um, and we believe that education is to create informed, critical, independent thinking citizens. And um, we th feel that the curriculum guide basically is in violates that and is in opposition to that. One thing that the people who criticize the people who oppose this uh, curriculum say is that What's wrong with you? The whole world is trying to understand China. You're depriving our kids from the chance of understanding China. That is so not the case. If that were the case, why did the Education Bureau several years ago um, change Chinese history from being a mandatory course to an elective course? Um, students should study history and Chinese history, and that includes the good and the bad. Here's the chance that we have to actually make a difference and get students engaged. Why do we then need to have this other thing come along? Why don't we trust our teachers and our students, give liberal studies a chance? This movement has been so encouraging to see that there are such um, independent thinking, well-organized, confident, articulate, intelligent, Young people, our secondary students, our hope, our future.